Hi there, uh, in this video we're going to have a look at the lead vocal part for Rather Be um, and have a look at what is involved to recreate this accurately both in terms of the note input and also some of the sound settings that you can use. Um, with any pop song the lead vocal is the most important element, it's the thing that our ear naturally gravitates to so it's worth spending the time and the effort to, to get this um, as accurate as possible especially if you are after those marks for accuracy of pitch and rhythm and articulation and also um, style and creativity. So um, first thing to be aware of then is if you look at my lead vocal part you can see it's made up of lots of short regions. Um, in other words when I was inputting these notes I was literally doing it one note at a time so um, breaking it right down into individual lines or individual phrases. You can see on the track above I've actually got an a cappella uh, vocal which I found on the interwebs. Um, the main function of this was just to serve as a reference so that I could hear the vocal on its own nice and exposed without getting distracted by any of the other instrumentation um, and also looking at the you know if you look at the waveform you can see exactly where each note sort of starts and stops and that can be helpful again when you're thinking about articulation and how long each note is or each word is sung for as well as obviously using your ears um, it's helpful sometimes to be able to see exactly how long a note is so that when you're editing you can then match the length of your notes to the, uh, to the length of the notes that were sung. Um, the vocal generally is in terms of the articulation is quite nice and smooth and legato um, and so I've tried to reflect that with my note input so we haven't got very many gaps between notes it's all quite smooth and flowing and these sort of considerations really should form part of your kind of research and analysis of the part um, before you get into doing any note input because obviously you're up against the clock with the note input so um, a bit of time spent analyzing and researching the part is is uh, time well spent one other technique that can really help with um, analysis and also with input is to make use of the varispeed control in, in uh, logic um, if in case you're not sure how to access this if we come up here to the control bar I'm going to select custom and then I'm going to control click here customize control bar and display and make sure that I've got varispeed switched on what this enables you to do is to slow down the recorded part by the way this acapella file is, uh, is easily found on the internet um, but I will yeah I'll add a link to this I think in the description for this video um, so with varispeed switching this on setting a minus value here you can slow down We're a the original audio and that makes it a lot easier again to, to hear uh, what's going on and to, and to be precise in recreating the, the note lengths. We're a Uh, one other point to make about note input is always um, with this and, and just generally um, always listen out for any material that you can copy because obviously that will save you time even if you then have to go and edit the copy slightly um, copying material and editing it will be a lot quicker than um, than inputting every single section uh, individually for example here I've copied the first bridge bar 25 to bar 33 I've copied that over to bar 65 73 um, I don't think that even needed any editing particularly. Uh, so that's pretty much it for note input. So just to recap, uh, the most important considerations then are articulation, so how long each note, each word is being sung for, um, and to recreate that. And also to have... Oh, I don't think I mentioned this. Maybe I have, can't remember. Um, overlapping notes. For example, you can see here, these notes are all overlapping one another. Let's take that off. So where you have overlapping notes, um, you can use the settings on the synth that you're using to translate those into uh, little glides between pitches. So if you listen to the first syllable, of, <coughs> first syllable of the word thousand. Uh, you can hear there's a slight glide, which I've reflected here. Uh, 
Okay, so anytime you have a glide between two pitches in the vocal, just make sure that you've got um, the note overlapping because you can use that overlap to, uh, to create the glide, which we'll have a look at when we get into the, looking at the sound design. You could do it with pitch bend. Um, personally, I prefer to do it by using overlapping notes as it makes it a bit easier to see exactly what's, what's going on um, with the pitches you're using. Okay, so let's, um, on that note, let's move on and start to take a look at some of the sound settings that we've got here. Okay, so first thing I'm going to say about the vocal patch is uh, it's very, very simple. We haven't got tons of modulation or effect or anything like that on it. Um, if I just play a few notes on the keyboard. It's a really, really simple sound. Um, the things that are important are that it sustains. In other words, that your volume envelope, you've got sustain uh, up to maximum. Um, so it's not, you know, it doesn't, the sound doesn't die away when you press a key. You want that to sustain as long as you keep the key held down. We've got a very short release here, but a bit of release nonetheless, and quite a quick attack. In terms of the filter, the cutoff is set reasonably high. We've got resonance right down at zero. And with the oscillators, I'm using a blend of triangle wave and square wave, just because that gave me a sort of a nice smooth sound, as opposed to something very sort of bright and brassy uh, like a saw wave. Uh, okay, so the main point I wanted to make then is it's quite a simple patch. Something that is important when you're creating a patch that you're using for a vocal part is that you've got it set to legato mode. Okay, not poly mode because human voices uh, can't sing chords. So we don't want the, the facility to play chords. We want legato, and it's this setting, this legato setting, that enables us to create those pitch glides that I was talking about. So when you overlap notes, it glides from one to the other. Now the speed of the glide with this particular instrument is set down here with our glide setting. So I just adjusted this to taste. Um, obviously if you have a glide that is up here somewhere, it sounds ridiculous. Um, so keep it, you know, fairly tasteful. I think it was somewhere around there. And I think that's pretty much it for the synth settings. Okay, so a sustaining sound, volume envelope sustain up to full, quick attack, quick release. Reasonably bright on the tone with the filter, uh, resonance at zero. I'm using a blend of these two oscillators, triangle and square wave. And then most importantly, is that you are in legato mode and you've adjusted your glide setting. Okay, so now let's have a look at a few plugins that I've used um, to shape this kind of raw sound. By the way, don't ever use the choir patches for vocals. Oh, oh, oh they're ridiculous. Um, now then, this plugin here is, a, is an interesting one. What this is, well, obviously this is called the Evoc 20 track oscillator. If you've ever heard of a vocoder, it operates along similar lines. Um, because what I've tried to do with this vocal part is to actually shape or uh, control a filter by using my acapella part. Um, now you might think, well, you're not allowed to include acapellas and recorded material in this sequence. And you're absolutely right, you're not. Um, but we are not including this audio in our completed sequence. We are just using it as a control signal which will shape the filter, uh, this filter, on our vocal part. In case uh, you have no idea what I'm talking about, let me um, just bring this in. speed off now. So hopefully you could hear when I switch that on that our focal part starts to take on some of the um, modulation characteristics of the sung vocal. In other words, you can almost hear the words being sung. Okay, 
So again, just to reiterate and to emphasize, we are not using the uh, a cappella file in any, you know, we're not hearing the original audio whatsoever. We are just using this as a control signal to shape this so that we get some of the characteristics of the words kind of imposed onto our lead vocal part. Now, if you want to use this technique, um, I recommend that you go and experiment with this plugin uh, in your in your own time. Um, but just to give you a couple of pointers as to how to set this up, first thing obviously is to install the plugin on the same channel as your um, as your instrument that you're using for the lead vocal. Then, in the plugin control panel, you can see up here in the top right hand corner, we've got side chain, and I've got audio three selected because audio three is the track that I put my a cappella file on. Okay, so you want to select the audio file track as a side chain. Then back over to the right hand side, I've got vocal selected as the signal. Um, we're not using it, we're not interested in stereo width particularly, so I've got this down at zero. Sensitivity right up to the top. Blend, uh, blend mode selected. But again, a lot of this stuff you need to experiment with and just go with what works best for you. Um, as I mentioned, the main, the most important things for getting this working are that you've got an audio track selected as your sidechain, and you've got a sidechain uh, selected as your analysis. Now I've also adjusted um, the formant controls a little bit and also used these EQ bars up at the top just to deal with uh, the low end of the sound so that we're just... But again, you know, these, these are things you can basically just adjust to taste. Okay, so we are, again, we're imparting the, um, the form and characteristics of the, the vocal, the way the vocal is sung, um, and we're using that to control a filter on top of our vocal part. Okay, other plugins that I've used, we've got a little bit of EQ, just to scoop out some of these frequencies around uh, 250 hertz. And then I've just got a compressor on, just to even out the dynamic level. Now, to me, after I'd done all that, I just thought, well, yeah, it sounds a bit too much like a vocoder. I just want, you know, a little less of that sort of effect. So what I ended up doing was taking the whole of my vocal, whole of my lead vocal part, copying that down onto another track. Again, those fundamental things that I talked about in terms of it's a sustaining sound with a quick attack and release, quite bright on the filter, low on the resonance, those things kind of match. So what I've done is just use that to layer up with my uh, filtered vocal. Um, and then one other thing to say about layering is in the choruses, something that jumped out at me when I was listening to the original mix, and especially listening to the a cappella, is when we get to the chorus. Get you another name, switch up the batteries. If you gave me a chance, I would take it. It's a shot in the door, but I'll make it. No sounds like when we get to the chorus the vocal is double tracked in other words it's been recorded twice so we're going from a single tracked vocal to a double tracked vocal in the chorus just to um, give it some extra intensity so what I've done there is copy my vocal part onto yet another track so a third vocal track and this time with the sound settings I've selected unison um, which kind of helps to recreate that effect of, of two people singing in unison or a double tracked vocal so my lead vocal part then is made up of three tracks, although I've only done the note input once, it's just then a case of copying it onto um, you know, other tracks just to get the effects that I'm after on the sound. And then what I've done with those three tracks is with them all selected, um, I have sent them all out to a bus. 
bus 6 in this case. So instead of ser uh, stereo output as the output, I've gone for a bus. So that uh, I can give all of those a bit of compression, a bit of EQ treatment or exciter, a bit of reverb, and a bit of delay. Uh, there are a couple of bits of backing vocal dotted around, not many. Um, let's have a look at this part here. So little bits of harmony on the words, um, mm, 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 break it, is it, and make it. Again, I've used that track oscillator plugin with the acapella as a side chain just to help to shape those words a little bit. And I got my head around the BVs again by using one of the stems, which I'll try and find. It's somewhere in here. So obviously, interestingly, I don't think that's Jess Glynn, I think that's a different singer. Um, so you might want to keep that in mind in terms of using a different sound setting uh, for those backing vocals. Anything else? So second bridge, just quickly mention these, we have like so, um, some sustained chords, almost like a vocal pad. Um, so if I play that part in the backing vocal stem, so bar 65, second bridge. <laughs> Okay, so we've looked at note input considerations. We've looked at using VariSpeed to analyze. Um, um, we've looked at some of the sound settings, in particular using the track oscillator sidechained to the acapella to use, uh, or rather to shape uh, a filter on the vocal sound so that you can kind of, so it sounds a little bit more like a vocal. We've talked a little bit about layering up and then looking at some of the backing vocal parts that are included in this piece of music. Um, so what I'll do is, uh, well the stems are pretty easy to find online, but I will add a link to the lead vocal and backing vocals in the description for this video. Um, yeah, that'll do. Um, I've already gone on long enough, so good luck and thanks for watching.